Renata, as a physicist who started out in string theory and now very interested in the biggest thing in, cos in cosmology and the interaction, how do you look at the universe? What do you feel about it? What, 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 what sense of uh, emotion and, and uh, focus do you have when you look at the, the way the universe is constructed? Uh, okay, so I'll try to uh, talk about a couple of things which for me make theoretical physics not just my work but my hobby, my art, mm. my something I love to do. And I'll start with my uh, deep hope that uh, supersymmetry will be discovered. And now, supersymmetry is, supersymmetry. is? What is that? Supersymmetry is a very special symmetry uh, which tells us that each particle which we have already observed, there will be a super partner of specific kind and it will be universal. And the reason why this is so fascinating, I'll start with uh, uh, what Einstein did when he introduced special relativity. So after hundreds of years, everybody knew Galileo relativity, where time was absolute and space was something Galileo knew uh, about this relativity principle. Then in uh, 1905, Einstein has realized that time is not absolute and you have to mix time and space mm -hmm. and this is where you have special relativity. And for the last hundred years, everything which we know about particle physics is completely confirming this famous formula, the energy is mc squared, and it works absolutely and perfectly. Now, the new ingredient may come if supersymmetry will be discovered, and it will be a new uh, kind of special relativity. So, uh, this universality, the fact that each particle will have a partner, comes from the fact that uh, the theory uh, has to be understood with symmetries, where uh, some dimensions are very exotic, they are so-called fermionic dimensions. And therefore, it is absolutely universal. You take every particle, and if every particle has a superpartner with spin difference one half, then supersymmetry will be confirmed. And it will be as deep as this difference between Galileo and Einstein, and in this scale. Uh, so, and it, it could happen soon, or perhaps not, we don't know, but this is one of the most fascinating topics. And, and what would that mean to our understanding of the universe? So if we want to uh, consider unified theory of all interactions, we already know from Einstein's attempt to combine electromagnetism and gravity that it is not working without supersymmetry. Mm -hmm. However, it works perfectly if you add supersymmetry. But this is hypothetical symmetry. We have not seen it yet in the world. But, but this, this would move us closer to a unification of all the forces. Of all and, forces. And particles and eventually. Particles. Right. And then we'll have to, supersymmetry by itself is not uh, good enough uh, to give us quantum gravity. But at the level of just particle physics, it may work extremely well. And so many people for many years are waiting good. to know, is it there or not? Like Einstein was not extremely you know, passionate about how soon the experiment will confirm general relativity. He just knew it is true. <laughs> he didn't care and about it. He, he didn't care that much. Yeah. Uh, so for some people, it is the same with supersymmetry. If it will not be discovered at the first range of accelerators, it will be later. <laughs> They're just heavier. And so in, in, in some situations, this becomes like, but is it still there or not? Mm. So if supersymmetry is there, it makes a perfect way to move to superstring theory. And then, uh, so we kind of work in the assumption that it will be discovered. And then when we try to address the issues in cosmology, then lots of things are coming together because of the new data. So if then we go with the rules, with the toolbox of string theory, and we use all the way of constructing the various worlds, and some of them are the one which we observe, then there are a number of most interesting questions. Uh, and I'm quite fascinated at present by the following issue. So I become uh, aware of the fact that one of the so-called holy grail in cosmology is a discovery of gravity waves from inflation. And again, they may be discovered or not, or they may be seen soon or in 15 years, but 
what we are trying to do from the perspective of fundamental physics, which is now superstring theory, we are trying to understand whether there are models which predict detectable level of gravity waves and models which predict their absence. And That's therefore, the measurements become extremely important. Why it's, this is very interesting is because the only information we can currently get is limited by this period of darkness. So we can go back, what, 300 uh, to 380,000 years or approximately 400,000 years after the end of inflation. We have to go much earlier. And, and that's yeah. all we can see with our yeah. current electromagnetic ra radiation. It's a wall, and that's it. You can, you, you can see that, that's wonderful, but you're still 400,000 years approximately away from the initial singularity and the, yeah. the first uh, inflation, yeah. when yeah. inflation occurred. Yeah. So with gravity waves, it's possible to see back to the time of inflation, theoretically? It, it, theoretically, uh, there are models of inflation which predict gravity waves. There are models of inflation uh -huh. which predict the level of gravity waves which will not be observed. Uh -huh. And it looks now like a test of which of the fundamental theory predicts one of the two things. And then the, the, me the future measurements become crucial. And uh, this could be a test of what really fundamental physics is about. And I assume the gravity waves from inflation will have its own characteristics, so you can distinguish it from the black hole mergers and oh, other absolutely. kinds. This It'll is, have its own yeah, unique Yeah, they're absolutely signature. unique. And there are other uh, so-called B-modes from cosmic strings, which also have their unique signature. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So there will be lots of interesting data, which we can bring all the way to fundamental physics. And this is perhaps the most yeah. interesting period now. And so how do you uh, uh, look at the, at, the, at, the, at the grand overview of what you do? I mean, you work on specific problems, and I understand that. But when you, when you step back, do you, do, you ever, do you ever have a sense of just uh, kind of awe, awestruck that you're, you, you have your, your formula and your, 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 literally your pen or pencil on the, the formula that represents such fundamental things? I mean, it's so astonishing. <laughs> yeah, the astonishing part, I was always kind of on the mathematical side of the story, and the real world was not, was not part of <laughs> what I was doing. But now when I talk to people who plan those experiments, for example, for B-mods, they're putting their life in line for the next 15 years. Yeah, sure. And they were extremely happy to know that even non-detection is an important information uh -huh. for fundamental physics. Right, right, right. And it is up to people who work in theoretical physics uh, to understand the whole uh, set of new data which will come eventually and what does it mean. Like what happened with the discovery of acceleration, it changed the face of what theoretical the accelerating physics expansion is. of the universe yeah. changed everyone's conception. Absolutely. And, and you and others in fundamental physics have to to deal with it. In fact, you yeah. changed your theories. It, it, it directed your research. You, ha yeah. you had to be consistent with that data. Yeah, absolutely. And it is not just, you know, one more experiment. It is the experiment <laughs> which enforces on us to uh, understand what it means uh, and what the fundamental physics is. And so there is this combination. So it's a very beautiful time that we have all this uh, fantastic, uh, important, crucial data coming in soon. And uh, so I start working with people who actually plan experiments. Yeah. And this is very, very interesting for me. And not just, so my formulas, which I loved before, I can now, uh, you know, I'm waiting for particular data to tell me which of these formula is actually more relevant than the other. And this is what I like about it.